Some say that this ceremony with its syncopated rhythms keeps away the evil spirits which approach the coast of Japan. I've hardly begun my journey in the land of the rising sun, and I can already feel the places inhabited by more than just people. After this feverish night, I wake peacefully on the shores of the Sea of Japan, in the quiet little town of Suzu, on the northern tip of the Noto Peninsula. Despite being part of the main island of Honshu, an hour's flight from Tokyo, this small finger of land is quite cut off from the rest of the country. I came to this region to track down an ancestral practice which only occurs here once a year during winter and which is called the Anakoto. The Anakoto is said to be a ceremony during which a man succeeds in contacting a spirit of nature. It's early February and the winter weather is harsh and changeable, encouraging the locals to stay home and the vegetation to wait for better conditions. If I find the streets of Suzu particularly empty this morning, it's not just because of the unfavorable weather. The residents all seem to be somewhere else. Drawn by the sound of loudspeakers, I come across the big annual market. In the depths of winter, the whole region gathers for the duration of a day to rekindle their community instinct. Snowflakes blown by the wind betray the presence of nearby mountains, while dishes based on seafood remind me that I'm a stone's throw from the shore. And I love this contrast. The Noto Peninsula is very rural, and the population of Suzu is mainly made up of fishermen and rice growers. Despite being dynamic, these activities are often not enough to generate a living wage. As a result, many people have a second job in the city. Captivated by the skill of this sushi chef, combining rice and fish in the purest tradition of the street vendors, I have a feeling that my journey is going to revolve around these two ingredients of Japan's culture and diet. Suzu's annual market is a welcome windfall for the local economy, which suffers during the slow winter months. From November to March, 
winter imposes its harsh yet magnificent presence here. Nature has great importance in Japan because each natural phenomenon, each tree, each river, each rock, is inhabited by a spirit, which is known here as a kami. Sometimes nature speaks clearly to me, like this rock, which looks like the bow of a ship and of which one legend tells that it was here that one of the founding monks of Japanese Buddhism discovered a magic stick. But I can feel the magic elsewhere, hidden somewhere between things. And I strive to film these landscapes whilst trying to capture a glimpse of the invisible. The Japanese mainly believe in two religions, Buddhism and Shinto. To understand, I have to begin by learning. So I'm going to visit a priest in a Shinto temple. I am aware of how lucky I am to attend this intimate ceremony because unlike Buddhist temples in which followers are welcomed, Shinto temples are reserved for priests. People coming to pray for the kami must remain outside. I carry out the ceremony twice a month. It's a prayer to the kami, the spirits which live in this temple. It's a prayer for life, for people's happiness and health. It is to thank the spirits and to ask them to protect us. Paper has great symbolism in Shinto. It has different meanings. The strips of paper folded into zigzag indicate the presence of a kami. And in any case, that's where it resides, when it's in the temple. When attached to a long handle, the strips purify the air when waved about. Shinto is characterized by a belief in nature and the spirits which inhabit it. So it is an amalgam of beliefs and rites, but there is no book like the Bible, nor any doctrine dictating behavior. There is no single god, but rather a multitude of spirits which people believe in. There are Shinto temples all over Japan, and each of them is home to its own spirits. So the temples don't only exist in natural settings, they are also present in big cities, because even when surrounded by concrete, nature continues to exist and to exert its influence. Moreover, the prayers we say for the rice in the countryside are the same as those in the city.
Rice plays a part in our lives throughout the year because it is grown everywhere in the region. Rice also means roots. It's our nourishment, our culture, our routine. What's more, we are currently right in the middle of the Anakoto season. This was an important meeting for me. It made me understand that the spirits, the kami, are everywhere. And one must respect them as much as be wary of them. I leave the temple to the sound of the Shinto music, pondering the priest's last words on the subject of the Anakoto. I still don't know what this ceremony consists of. I just know that it's about spirits and rice fields. <laughs> 